internet world, hope you are all doing well and welcome back to another episode of Cassar Industries. Today we're going to do a little bit more work on the Calais. Uh, in the last episode you saw that we started doing the manual conversion on this and we got the pedals and clutch master cylinder installed and that's sort of as far as we got. I'm um, going to do a little bit more progress today. I don't have a heck of a lot of time, I've only got a, a couple of hours up my sleeve at the moment so I figured I'll just get it in here and try and get a bit more done. Uh, whether this episode turns out being more than just today's worth of work or what, I, I don't really know. We'll just sort of see what happens. Um, but yeah, we'll get the car inside and I'll show you what we're going to do today. Rightio guys, so the mission for today is I just want to get the wiring harness, the engine wiring harness swapped over. So the manual wiring harness for the engine is, is different to the automatics. The actual engine side of things is pretty much the same, but um, in the automatic uh, wiring harnesses they have all of the wiring for the tran automatic transmission whereas in the manuals they don't but in the manuals they do have the pickup for the speed sensor and reverse lights the only one that i'm really overly concerned about with what i'm going to be using this car for is the speed sensor because i want my speedo working so we have a complete manual um wiring harness here as well as in the box down there we do have a manual computer um, but for now i'm just going to get the harness changed over and see if it will start on the auto ECU with the manual harness. I think it probably should. Um, and the reason for that is you do have to link the ECU with the body control module for the car to start. And there's a bit of stuff around in that. So don't know if I'll have time for that today, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, basically what we're going to do is get the engine cover off, get the alternator, I'll get the belt off, get the alternator off so we can access the wiring. Uh, we'll get the thing up and undo all of the wiring from the transmission and we'll get the passenger kick panel out of it, um, get the ECU out and unplugged and start feeding all the wiring out from under the dash and all of that. All right, so I've jumped ahead a bit as I often do and I've done undone everything on the engine um, that's related to wiring. I've just got to go underneath and do the knock sensors from underneath and the transmission wiring. But literally wherever there is a plug just disconnected so everything on the throttle body the injectors crank and cam angle sensors the coil packs the coolant temp sensors the earth wires on the back of the motor the oxygen sensors for the exhaust sort of just go through and disconnect everything you know e e egr valve purge valve solenoid all that stuff's all been disconnected so i'm going to lift it up in the air now undo everything from underneath and then we'll drop it back down and get inside the car and start in there all right, so got all of that stuff undone. Everything's unplugged from the auto as well. Um, so you got two plugs on the inhibitor switch back there. Uh, you got your speedo sensor on the back of the transmission there. And there's also a big plug that sits up on the side there, um, which is that one there, that big round one. The seal's leaking again. Oh, that's a shame. Anyway, so um, drop it back down now and we'll pull all of that wiring through. All right, guys, so there we have it. There is the auto loom just sort of hanging out there. So it's just got to go back through the firewall, like under the stuff inside the um, inside of the car, and then we'll pull it back through. But while the car is set up on the hoist, um, a little bit of a double up, what I think I'm going to do is start laying in this harness and start connecting everything and putting everything back together. Go underneath it, we'll do the knock sensors and stuff while it's on the hoist. Uh, and then we can get it back off the hoist uh, and worry about doing the inside of the car things. So we'll just go through and do the reverse of what we've just done, basically. Rightio, cool cats. So that is all done. Everything is all connected back to the engine as it was before. Uh, obviously, with the only exception being the couple of two or three plugs that are for the gearbox. I've just sort of cable tied that up underneath the car, off to the side underneath. But besides from that, everything is all connected and back together. There was a couple of little repairs I had to do to the wiring along the way. Oh, and there's one other one. I've got this plug down here. That's actually for the air conditioning uh, compressor, which I've deleted. So I just want to cut that off. But besides from that, yeah, we're, we're done. So this is the section of the manual loom that's left. So I've just got to feed that into the car and plug that all in. And this is this section of the automatic loom that we need to finish removing. So. We'll go inside the car now, pull the kick panel out. No, actually, I'll just trim that wire first before I forget about it. We'll go inside the car, pull the kick panel out, um, and start getting things apart in there. All right, so we've come inside the car. I've just unclipped the ECU from its mount, which is just there. Uh, you've seen me have all of this stuff. Oh, Mentos. There's totally a Mentos wrapper down there. Anyway, um, yeah, you've seen me do this before when we did the... Um, 
manual valve body slash manualize your auto for a dollar video where we modified the wiring just here. So basically I've just unplugged this from the ECU. There's also one white plug just up there that you unclip as well. And then you've got the big plug on the firewall just up there. So it's just a matter of pushing that through, pushing all of these wires out the hole and then bringing the other stuff through. Sweet as, auto loom is out. So that is ready to chuck in the trailer. I just had to transfer this retaining clip for the harness over from the auto loom to this one because it was missing. This just unclips in two halves. So now it's just a matter of feeding all of this back through the hole. We'll plug it back into the auto ECU and see if the thing starts. All right, that's all in now. So this is all tidied up and back to how it should be. So, going inside the car. Here is all of our wiring sitting down here. So yeah, we'll just go and plug all of this in now and see if we can get the thing to start. I might even just scan it quickly first um, before I try and hit the key. But anyway, here goes nothing. Sorry for the severe lack of light guys, my light died. But ECU is plugged in. So we've got the manual harness running into the auto ECU. I was going to scan it uh, and just see if it comes up with any codes, but I thought to myself, of course it's going to. There's things, pins that are now not occupied in the manual loom that are still there in the auto ECU. So if I scan it, it's, it's of course it's going to come up with faults. Um, and also when I start it, I'm pretty sure that the engine light is going to come on pretty much straight away. But I'm just basically wanting to know if the thing starts and runs and if it runs smoothly and stuff like that. So. We'll connect the battery. Nothing's on fire. Cool. You know what? Put it in park. Oh yeah, it's got a squeaky belt. But yeah, she's fired straight up. Got a low fuel warning and the engine lights come on straight away. The belt's squeaking because it's wet because I did dump a little bit of cooling out of it before. So just ignore the belt squeak, that will go away. But yeah, she's running smooth. She's not misfiring or anything like that. So I call that a win. Hang on, I'm just going to shut it off. Fire out that belt squeak's noisy. Yeah, sorry about that, that will go away. It's just a little bit wet. Um, but yeah, I'm calling that a win. So with a manual loom on an auto ECU, the thing still does run. Um, so that's good. So now I don't really have much time. It's getting pretty late in the afternoon. 13,000 steps today. Go me. Um, yeah, so I might just leave it for now uh, and we'll pick this up in a couple of days when I start stuffing around with the ECU side of things. All right, guys. So before I go and change that ECU over, um, I'm just going to check a couple of things on my scanner. This is to do with just a couple of checks and also how to program a body control module to an ECU. So the first thing I'm going to do is just going through Holden, go on to manual ID, put in the year. Sorry about the noise, it has just started bucketing down with rain. VY Calais 3.8 V6, okay. Uh, I'm just going to check engine codes because we did have the engine light come on. I just want to make sure it's only transmission related. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's all transmission stuff. So I'll, just for fun, I'll clear it. it. Doesn't really matter. It's going to come straight back anyway. So what you want to do is go into body control module because we need to obtain a body control module security number, and you can do this on VY Commodores quite easily. Uh, we're gonna go functional test and then into key coding and BCM, PCM linking. Hit key coding, scroll all the way down, display security number, that's what we need. So there's our BCM security number there. So what I'm gonna do is just take a photo of that. All right, so now we can exit out of this. Uh, we're gonna back right out. All the way out. And we're just gonna leave that there. 
Gonna turn the key off and swap the computer over. Alright, so here's our auto computer. Here's our manual one. All we need to do is undo those three plugs again and plug them into here. And I'll show you what's next. Alright, so I've got the manual computer in. So now if I turn the ignition on, uh, we should have, theoretically we should have no codes, but we should have no errors. Alright, so I've got an OK on the system check. We will still come up with the park reverse neutral drive stuff down the bottom here, because uh, that's actually done through the body control module. So the only way to really get rid of that um, is by changing the BCM, or there might be a programming thing. I'll have to look into that a bit more. So what we're going to do now, so obviously the only things that could cause a um, an engine light now would be the fact that there is no speedo sensor plugged in underneath the car. So we're just going to go through now again, same thing, KLEVY, and we're going to check for codes real quick. Before I do that, I'm just going to see, show you what happens without coding. The thing should start and then turn off straight away. Yeah, so it just cranks and cranks for a second and then stops, actually. Engine, want to go to codes. So basically, I'm just going to go through quickly and just check all the systems for codes, and then I'll show you what we're going to do in regards to programming. All right, so we're just going back through, checked the codes on everything. The only code that uh, we had was in the body control module saying not okay to start due to no link acquired. So we're going to go back in here now through the key coding and BCM link, go into that. Uh, we are going to do, uh, where are we, BCM link, enter new BCM security code, which I have my phone next to me with the photo from before, so I'll just punch that number in. <laughs> We're going to hit OK. So we've just got to wait 30 seconds with the key in the ignition, with the, in the on position. Alright, so it's actually been about 3 minutes and it's come up with this message that the test is completed. Ensure ignition has been cycled off for 15 seconds and then back on. So we will turn the key off. Exit out of that. We'll exit out of that. Exit out of that. Exit out of that. And after about 15 or 20 seconds, we'll just go through and check the codes again. So I'm going to go turn the ignition back on now. Got to go through a self-check. That's all okay. We'll check for codes in the BCM. No codes present. So now, it should start. running on a manual ECU. Fantastic. Alrighty guys, so the only thing that's left now is I'm gonna run the thing for a while. Um, the reason why I drained some coolant out of it before, by the way, is the thermostat gasket was leaking quite badly on this thing. So I've gone through and replaced the gasket and I've also fitted a high flow thermostat to it now. And I filled the coolant up till it came out of the bleeder, but I always do like to run them for a while to make sure they're going to get up to temp properly and the fan cycle and all of that. Uh, I want to make sure that it's going to do all of that anyway. Uh, now with the new ECU and wiring, just make sure everything's going to run as it should. Uh, as for the ECU itself, I've actually gone through and put all the inside back together. So I've just mounted the ECU and put the kick panel back on. So that's all looking as it should. So happy with that. Another win too, by the way, is it does still uh, move. So I've still got reverse and first gear. So if you put it in drive, it's only got first, but it does thump quite hard when you put it in gear. Uh, but I was a little bit worried thinking, oh, without any wiring connected to the auto, is it still gonna be able to get gears? Because I still need to be able to park the thing and move it out the back and move it around. So that's good. So yeah, that's that. And that's just gonna about do it for this episode, guys. As I said, I'm just gonna run it for a while, make sure it gets up to temp okay, and then sort of call it, um, call it a night. Um, 
next time you see this car, it'll be in the next episode or two, uh, we will actually go ahead and finish, completely finish the manual conversion. Uh, now that all of the nitty gritty fiddly stuff's out of the way, um, I like to get all of that little stuff done first before I tackle the big stuff, as well as um, prepping parts. So that way, come the main event, everything's sort of ready to go. So that's that. It's all going quite smoothly so far. Uh, if you like what you see, please remember to like and subscribe. Please also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, yeah, take care of yourselves and we'll see you shortly in the next video.